For some runners, it feels like low heart rate training simply isn't working, but there are a number of important aspects of your training that you really need to have covered to make sure that you can truly experience the benefits of running slow to run faster. Let's get started with one that so many runners get wrong, working with incorrect heart rate zones. This is one of my biggest gripes about methods like Mathetone training, which uses the simple formula of 180 minus your age to set your MAF threshold, which you're not to cross when running at your aerobic training zone. In reality, there's quite a bit of variation in heart rate zones from one runner to another. I'd much rather have you set your heart rate zones using your maximum and resting heart rates and the Carvanen formula to figure out what 60-70% to 70 intensity looks like. That way, you'll have a better shot at running at the correct heart rate to be in your aerobic training zone. For example, Matt was running using the MAF 180 minus age formula, which as a 33 year old had him running, trying to keep his heart rate under 147 beats per minute. However, with a relatively low maximum heart rate of 175 and resting heart rate of 45 beats per minute, his 60 to 70% zone is looking more like 123 to 136 beats per minute. That's a 10 beats per minute difference to what MAF would have had him running at. So don't just blindly follow a generic age-based calculation. The next thing to look at is your weekly training volume. So that's your weekly running mileage or time spent running each week. Low heart rate training to build your aerobic base isn't just about running in the right heart rate zone, but also about making sure you get enough of that running in the bank each week. The beauty of running easy, so long as you're running with good form, is that it's much more gentle on your body, meaning that you can push the mileage without quite such a risk of injury as usual. So, if you're currently doing a block of low heart rate training, focused on running slow to run faster, and it's not working, you're not getting any faster in your aerobic heart rate zone, consider whether it might make sense to add another easy paced run to your week, or extend one or more of your weekly runs so that you increase your weekly mileage or time running, but not by more than 10% in any one go. Siobhan is a good example of this. She'd been running three and a half hours per week consistently across four runs per week for 12 weeks, but was getting frustrated about her lack of progress. If anything, she just felt like she was just slowly getting slower. Over the course of six weeks or so, we gradually increased her weekly running time to four and a half hours, which was the catalyst needed to start developing her aerobic energy system more effectively. She went from running 11 minute miles to nine minute miles for the same effort in one summer. Another thing that us runners are often pretty terrible at is looking at our running and lifestyle holistically, rather than viewing running in isolation from everything else we get up to from day to day. I get it, for lots of us, myself included, running is a form of escape, but the reality is that what happens in the non-running aspect of your life will directly impact your running. This is even more true when you're trying to keep your heart rate low while you're running. Stress, poor sleep, caffeine consumption, and general poor dietary choices can affect how your heart rate responds to exercise. All of these different stress factors place your body in a chronic state of fight or flight and hamper your ability to burn fat for fuel as your body turns to carbohydrates as an easier source of fueling to keep you running. I'm not saying you need to eliminate each of these issues from your life as there are usually more complex factors which have landed you in that situation in the first place. But what if you managed to get an extra one hour sleep every night by going to bed a little bit earlier? You started to drink decaf coffee instead of caffeinated, or you reduced the amount of processed foods you eat midweek. Just a few small changes here and there can really change how your body turns food into energy and will revolutionize your running. That's exactly what Andrew, a 37 year old painter and decorator did. He was training for his first marathon and was getting really frustrated with not seeing the progress in pace that he expected, despite all his training. I asked him about his sleep and it turns out that he had a six month old baby at home at the time and that he was burning the candle at both ends with his marathon training, trying to survive on three to five hours of sleep per night. His body was constantly under a degree of duress and that's just through being a new dad, let alone marathon training. In reality, sleep isn't something we could easily change for Andy, but nutrition was. 
We focused on getting him to eat more vegetables and non-processed foods, and within a week or two, he reported feeling much more energized and that his running was going really well, which was obviously fantastic to hear. Similarly, underlying health and medical conditions can affect your ability to run with a low heart rate. If you're worried that your health might be affecting your running, then please don't hesitate to go and see a doctor. If you're following a running plan that calls for you to back off the training for a week, every four weeks, reducing your training load by 30-50% to 50 for that week, then you're already doing one of the most important things you can do for your training. If not, then be sure to look at where you can, every fourth or fifth week, take a slightly easier training week so that your body can properly recover from the training of the weeks before and prepare to push hard again for the next week. In truth, it's those moments when we allow our bodies to relax that we actually get the time and energy for our body to heal properly, adapt and become fitter for next time.